again, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your modesty be known to all men. The Lord is nigh. Be nothing solicitous, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your petitions be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, the Jews sent from Jerusalem priests and Levites to John to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and did not deny, and he confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, No. They said therefore unto him, who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they that were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said to him, Why then dost thou baptize, if thou be not Christ? nor Elias, nor the prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there hath stood one in the midst of you, whom you know not. The same is he that shall come after me, who is preferred before me, the latchet of whose shoe I am not worthy to loose. These things were done in Bethania beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, with the rose-colored vestments and the flowers permitted to be adorning the altar today. And this Mass is being offered for the parishioners of Holy Innocence. The second collection today is for the retired priests and religious of the Archdiocese of New York. And next Sunday's second collection will be for the Christmas flowers and decorations for the church. The Ember Days occur this week. Please take a copy of the bulletin to read the rules for fasting and abstinence this coming Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, according to the common teaching of the fathers of the Church, the foundation of Christian perfection is humility. St. Augustine teaches, in order to become great, it is necessary to begin by being little. Once again, this Sunday, we are presented in the Holy Gospel with the person of St. John the Baptist, whom we said last Sunday is the personification of humility, together, of course, with our Lord and our Blessed Mother. Always saying that he must decrease while the Lord must increase in him. This penitential season of Advent reminds us in humility that we are to admit we are sinners in need of conversion. St. John writes in his first letter, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. If you do not go to confession, saying, I have nothing to confess, that I don't commit sin, well, then I think you need to do a much deeper examination of conscience, delve much more deeply into the Ten Commandments and what they mean. Each and every one of us is in need of conversion. The lukewarm must become fervent, the fervent must reach perfection, and the perfect must reach heroic virtue. All must advance 
in virtue and sanctity. Too often we make ourselves to be greater than we are, but we should be asking ourselves, how does God see me? How do I stand before God? Remember the passage of sacred scripture, which mention, mentions about one doing their duty. And our Lord says, so you also, when you shall have done all these things that are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which we ought to do. Do you just do the minimum to be considered a Catholic? Or do you at least strive to give God that extra, to go over and above our duties and what is required of us in the living of our holy religion? What in my life do I need to change in order to be more pleasing to God? How am I to put off my old self and become the new man? taking Christ and his ways onto ourselves, and as John Henry Cardinal Newman said, to let the Lord shine in and through us to others. This is humbling to acknowledge our problems, our vices that we habitually fall into, and our weaknesses. Saint Isaac the Syrian stated, as salt is needed for all kinds of food, so humility is needed for all kinds of virtues. If we are not striving for the virtue of humility, we are going to have a difficult time in cultivating the other virtues. Our fallen nature, wounded as a consequence of original sin, bears within itself the seed of sin in the form of our evil tendencies and habits. In our desire to follow the Lord, who is the way, the truth, and the life, who offers us the perfection of his heavenly Father as a norm for our life, we must engage in an intense struggle against sin in order to destroy its deepest roots and even its, its slightest traces in us. St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta made a private vow that she would never deliberately commit a venial sin. Sometimes the game is played saying, well, I will sin up to this point because it's only venial I'm not going to cross the line into mortal sin. That's playing a game with God. That's treading on very dangerous ground because venial sin upon venial sin upon venial sin certainly can lead to mortal sin. And to realize the ugliness of all sin, how all sin, even the slightest venial one, offends the infinite majesty of God. And because of our love for him, we should want to avoid again even the least offense against his infinite majesty. Or presuming God's mercy, not fighting temptation, but simply saying, well, I'm going to give in to this sin. I'm going to commit this sin because tomorrow I can go to confession. We are not to sin deliberately and hurt God and then run to the sacrament of confession. When we sin, it, sh it sh really should be a slip up, something that I'm not plotting out, something I'm not planning to do. I don't want to offend God. It should be a real fall, a real mistake. And so these are things to consider in our desire for humility and in our desire to grow in holiness. To best practice the virtue of humility and meekness, we are to abandon ourselves to God as a child casts itself without reserve into the arms of its loving Father 
and to let God do with us whatever he pleases without asking for our permission. Again, St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta would not only say to give God permission, but also accept what God gives and give what he takes with a big smile. In other words, we are to accept everything that comes from him with joyfulness, confidence, peace, serenity, and reverence. Difficult when we practice our self-will and giving in to our desires. Humility is the key to allowing Christ to possess our lives and therefore be a cause of our joy. We decrease that he might increase. We lose ourselves that he might be found. We die to ourselves daily that he might live. When troubled by the trials and tribulations of this life, we make the words of the great Saint Teresa of Avila our own. Let nothing disturb thee, let nothing affright thee. All things are passing, God never changeth. Patient endurance attains to all things. Who God possesses, in nothing is wanting, God alone suffices. So in imitation of our blessed Lord and our Lady and St. John the Baptist during these days of Advent, these days when we prepare for the coming of Christ, not only at Christmas, but at the end of time, and even in that daily coming to us in Holy Communion. We have good models to imitate and good intercessors for us that we would become more and more like the Lord whom we serve. Begging the Sacred Heart of Jesus for some of his humility in our own lives. And as St. Philip Neri would so often counsel his hearers, my children, he would say, be humble, be lowly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.